Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Video Adrenaline, where we're going to explore the interaction between Adobe Photoshop and After Effects. Today, we're going to make a quick 3D set out of a single photo and show you how you can use multi-layers and multi-plane to really create a quick, down and dirty virtual environment. Here's how it works. Now, I've started over here in Photoshop with a single photo, and what I need to do is identify the major planes. I see three. There's the sky that's going to go in the background, there are mountains, and then there's vegetation sort of towards the front. Here's how it works. Let's go ahead and start to isolate those layers. So I'll choose Select Color Range, and what I'm going to do is select the mountain here. And we can use the localized color option, which will constrain that, and just sort of click and drag through. And you see it pretty quickly creates a selection. Option will subtract. That worked out well. Click OK, and we've got the mountain. Now I could just simply duplicate this layer and apply a mask and you see that we've got the mountain on its own layer. Now, once I was pretty happy with that, I'd go ahead and do a little bit of cloning to fill it in. So we can go ahead there and actually just throw that mask away and tell it to apply it. And now with the clone stamp tool, what we'll do is just option click and fill things in a little bit. On a PC, that's gonna be an alt. And we're just filling in the mountain range there. You see that works pretty well. Now, once you get that done, I'd go after then the vegetation. And that color range tool works well. You can also say, oh, go ahead and select just the greens or the sampled colors and then click on what you want. You see that gets in there pretty well. We'll adjust the fuzziness. And it picks that up nicely. You've got a selection. You can always go to Q for quick mask and adjust that, or simply click the Refine Edge button, and you can adjust this here, smoothing it out, shifting the edge as needed. And when you're happy, apply a layer mask. And the cool thing is, is with that, a simple levels adjustment will let you refine that mask, tightening it up or darkening it, Simply click on the mask and press Command L for levels, and you can go ahead and tighten up that mask as needed. And with your paintbrush tool, paint away with white to remove anything you don't want. With your paintbrush tool, paint with black to remove any stray pixels you don't want. That looks pretty good there. You see we've got our mountains, we've got our vegetation, and you just sort of get the pieces put together. Now, I've finished this out here, and you're seeing we've got our sky, our mountain, and our cacti. And at this point, this is ready to send on over to After Effects where we can extrude it into a virtual world. Let's close that and jump into AE. I'm going to go ahead and import. And let's grab that Photoshop document and import it as a composition. Now, do not choose retain layer sizes. You're going to see in a moment that Bringing this in with the borders intact is going to be useful as you start to extrude things in 3D space. I'm going to go ahead and click Open and bring that in and double click to open up the world here. Now, with everything visible, we can go ahead and make these 3D layers. The sky is just a simple blue, so I can leave that as a 2D layer. But what we're going to do is push back the mountains. So P for position and we start to push that farther away. Now the farther that goes back, the more it needs to scale up. Now don't freak out. You're saying, well, you're going to scale it over 100%. It's going to get pixelated. No. When you push things back in Z space, you're essentially scaling them down. Then by applying a scale adjustment, what you're just doing is blowing it back up to its original size. So it's not going to get soft. Everything concatenates. In other words, it processes through as a single operation. Scales down, then scales back up non-destructively, giving you your original pixels. If you press S for scale, and you now start to scale this back up, you're going to scale until the borders match the edges. So when you get that border to actually touch the edge, and if you want to make it easier to see, 
right click and change that to something like red. And now as you scale, it's much easier to tell once you've lined up the edges, like we've done there. So we've got our own little virtual world. This is easier to see if we switch this to two views. On the left, I'm going to choose custom view one, which gives me a little virtual set. On the right, I could see the active camera, which is looking through the lens. Let's go ahead and change this to a video size. And we'll drop in a video clip. Let's drop that on top. We'll quickly do a key. Effect, keying, key light, eyedropper. And let's take a look at the screen mat there real quick. Got to clean that up a little bit. We'll clip the blacks. Clip the whites a little. There we go. Drag through. That's looking pretty clean. We'll set that back to final result. And we'll just put a little bit of softening on the edge. One. All right. Now, we'll make her a 3D layer. And she'll be positioned in front of everything. And we're just going to go ahead and pull those cactus back behind her so they're not on top of each other. So we'll push that a little further away. And then use that scale command to just scale it up so the lines touch. There you have it. So what we've got here is a nice little virtual set with some actual depth. I can go ahead and add a 3D camera and actually move in three-dimensional space. Layer, new, camera. We'll just put in a 35 millimeter, or in this case, let's do 50. Drops it into play. We're looking through that camera. And now the camera can actually move. So if I want to do a little bit of a tracking shot, we can have the camera start to the left. Turn on position and point of interest. And then we're going to go forward to about four seconds where that camera is going to go ahead and dolly a little bit to the right. And we'll adjust the pan as well using point of interest to pan over and see our subject. There we go. Let's go ahead and take a look at just one view. And we'll do a quick preview. Now, because you have a multi-plane set, what's happening is that objects are farther away from each other. So as it pans, you get a little bit of overlap or parallax so that the background and the foreground objects look like they're actually passing in 3D space and you create some sense of depth because of that overlap or parallax effect. Very cool technique, as you see here, and it creates a nice sort of believable 3D environment for her to be talking in. And this is a great way to make virtual sets. You could absolutely refine this using lights and additional depth of field blurring inside your 3D camera. But all in all, this is pretty cool stuff and a very easy way to create a virtual environment just from a single photo. For Video Adrenaline, my name is Rich Harrington. Be sure to head on over to Creative Kyle. We could check out more tutorials and our great forums.